here in our region, we don't really have too many of them that go to our tournaments. Um, I agree. But Charlie the King also has uh, a Lucina, and he also has one more character. I'm failing at the top of my head, but whenever I have seen him like go up against uh, Robin, he may have just been like being entertaining on his stream. Uh, but he was complaining a lot, and that's usually the mark of uh, Charlie, either having a little bit of frustration with the with the the match, or finding a gimmick that he has to work around. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's going to happen between Grandmaster and Charlie the King. Okay, it looks like we are going to see a Fire Emblem throwdown here. Charlie the King going Lucina. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, he likes he likes to bring out his uh, Lucina. All right, we're starting off on town here. Lots of space for Robin to work his magic. And of course, both of these players are actually going to be able to juggle off the platform. But as you can see, Charlie is on the approach only to get beaten out by a down throw on a forward air. Now, I, I don't know a whole lot about how this matchup typically plays out at the top level because it's not one that most people see very often. But, you know, Lucina's range advantage really isn't much of an advantage in this case. No, it's not, especially since she's pretty much going to be on the chase for a majority of the match. And also with the fact that Levin Sword has like a huge hitbox that you, you just saw right there. The air-to-air -air combat between these two characters is going to be very difficult for Charlie to get around. And of course, also landing the snipe with the thunder. Grandmaster taking the first stock. Ooh. I was just about to say, uh, the one thing I can see Lucina excelling at here is edge guarding because Robin kind of a sitting duck when trying to recover with Elwyn. But... Uh, Apparently, it's not free for Lucina offstage either, as we just saw there. Uh, everyone's got to watch their back in this match. Dude, that's, that is probably the most consistent thing about this game, is getting off the ledge. No matter, just about every character in the game has difficulty escaping the ledge, especially at a top level. But there's the jab lock into S-Smash, and Charlie the King evening up the socks. Not, not taking out much damage either. Yeah, no, that was, that was a really great uh, halt on the momentum that... Grandmaster was starting to build there. Uh, well executed on Charlie's front, and we're back to a totally even game here. And just, this is what I love to see. I want to see back and forth carnage between the two players. High level play. Look at this spacing coming up from Charlie. Here we go, back to ledge trapping. Trying to trap, looking for the jump at the ledge, but in fact, uh, one, our Grandmaster is able to escape. Yeah, th this is a slugfest. They're, they're swinging and throwing everything. I. I mean, well, Robin's throwing stuff. Lucina's just throwing, <laughs> throwing fares, but um, both equally potent. Although, uh, if we're talking about potency, it's hard to match the Levin Sword up air. Grandmaster gonna take that all the way to the bank and get a stock with it. But uh, we saw how quickly Charlie turned the tides back into his favor there after the first stock. So, if he's able to do that again, then this lead might not amount to very much. Yeah, 105 on Grandmaster. You can see, of course, Charlie is on the hunt, but the defensive play, the turtle style of Grandmaster is so difficult to get around. We see him constantly going into shield and then either jumping out of the shield with Levin Sword Fair, which covers so much area. Mm -hmm. And it looked like, uh, was that a down tilt tech chase? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, screen's a little, uh, little hazy for me, but... That is two stocks now Charlie's gotten off of uh, tech setups. So Grandmaster has to has to start thinking about timing these techs and depriving Charlie of that opportunity if he wants to hold on to these stocks longer. Yeah, and look at the way that Charlie continues to use the extended F-Tilt just to give him a little bit more space when challenging on the ground. He knows that uh, really Robin has the advantage when it comes to the horizontal aspect of the game because he has access to the Thunder and Elfire. <laughs> He's just trying to extend his damage zone a little bit more. Dash attack almost going to take the stock, but not quite. Uh, last legs here for Charlie the King. Levin Sword is still active, never mind. Uh, but there's plenty of other tools Robin has at his disposal to seal this stock off. And the ledge traps are coming in, although the arc fire ran out at the perfect time for Charlie. Yeah, also, you know, Thunder coming back as soon as the arc fire is out. You see a little bit of the, the dancing blade at the edge. Oh, going low to try and get again, close out the game, but Charlie is on the hunt. Oh, and he, he 
he texts, but he texts in place this time and is still hit with a smash. <laughs> oh, and the Dancing Blade wow. just extending it just enough, long enough so that uh, Grandmaster's get up option would get caught. And Charlie that able to sneak out game one. That was Grandmaster's game for most of, of the last stock there, and he couldn't quite close it out. Started to adapt with the teching, but didn't pick the right option, and Charlie just saw his opportunity and ran with it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just that's Charlie the King. That's that top time. layer, yeah. that's that top player mentality. That's right, Saruna. Yep. You, you can't give him an inch, because they're going to take it way oh. further than that. Unfortunately, I think Grandmaster was looking at the trophy. He was saying, like, this is it. I'm going to take game one. And when you start thinking about that, you change your mindset from being, I have to win to I can't lose. And that's yeah. not the mindset you want going into these matches. Absolutely not. And that's a really, really important point that a lot of people, I do that when I used to enter stuff. I, I would have oh, a yeah. comfortable lead and I'd think, like, okay, this is good. I'm doing okay. I'm going to be okay. And you're never okay if you start thinking like that in this game. <laughs> So much nope. can change in a flash. Don't think about that you're going to be okay. Think about how you're going to keep your lead. Think about how you're going to les trap your opponent and then rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. Complacency, easy, uh, easy one-way street to an unfortunate turnaround loss. So we're going to see if Grandmaster can make any adaptations. We're running it directly back to town. Obviously, didn't think the stage was a problem there. No, and honestly, I think like... Uh, Grandmaster was actually able to utilize the stage pretty well to his advantage. I mean, we didn't really see him like abuse the platforms too much, but then neither did Charlie. Yeah, the platforms didn't play a whole... Uh, the platforms pretty minor part of that game, but uh, what was really helping Grandmaster... Think... <gasps> oh, no, no, just dropping too low. Charlie forfeiting that stock, and Grandmaster still able to make it back. And that that was has a lot a of rage. strong lead, too, for Charlie. It was. He was. He had. Not only did he have the the percent lead, but he had momentum going in that first stock. Yeah. But still able to clean it up. Let's hit the reset button. Two stocks apiece. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie able to stop the bleeding there. Exactly what he needed to prevent that SD from kind of costing control of this game. But uh, what I was saying earlier, I think more than the platform, what helped Grandmaster a lot on this stage is just the amount of space there is to run. It's a very long stage, and that gives Robin a lot of room to kind of play that turtle game, charge some of the stuff he wants to be charging, and draw Lucina in. And look at this, even being able to set up at the ledges with the L fire, but chasing a cross stage with an S master. Is Charlie going to go deep again? Nope, he waits, retreats back to the ledge, and looks for the option. And I'm noticing Charlie getting a lot of mileage reading some of Grandmaster's defensive options. We saw him chase there that roll, uh, punish it hard with a smash attack. It seems like as this set goes on, Charlie might be getting a better idea of how Grandmaster tries to alleviate some of the pressure he's putting on. And that's dangerous. I will say that Charlie has definitely adapted when it comes to his approaching tools uh, against Grandmaster because in game one we saw a lot of like aerial approaches, but now he's staying a lot more grounded. He found out that that worked in game one. And because of that, we're not seeing as many fair out of shield Levin swords from Grandmaster. He has to resort more to the horizontal game of Thunder. Mm -hmm. And that is a limited resource. Thunder is almost out. Oh, there's uh, the down tilt. Does. That's what he needed. One more time, we're going to lose a stock to the tech chase there. Uh, Charlie's so potent with that. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people uh, often associate with Wolf players. Wolf has some incredible tech chase punishes. So I'm not surprised to see him so proficient with that here, even with a different character. Very, very well said. Yes, Wolf has definitely tech chased the character. <laughs> but here's the arc fire at the ledge again. So many Art projectiles. Throw oh, all the elements at him. <laughs> oh, thunder didn't work. Try fire. Fire didn't work. Maybe we'll try wind. I don't know. We haven't seen Nosferatu come out yet, but you know, there's still time. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it. But of course, I feel like Nosferatu is like really excels when your opponent likes to hang on the ledges because you can always like trip him up. Since yeah, it or, is like or shield mid -rod. and Charlie is not doing a lot of that. No, Charlie is holding forward and making it Grandmaster's problem. Mm -hmm. And it's working out, really. Like, this game one was 
dead even. This is not dead even. Charlie S. Deed, and this is still. Oh! I'm cool. Well, okay, I I was not looking closely enough because I thought Charlie had two stocks. <laughs> no, remember we had Charlie had an SD. He only had two stocks to play with that game. Uh, might be. Uh, so that was in fact very even, and Grandmaster is going to inch out a victory there, put himself on the board. All right. I I gotta say, shout outs to the Smash Ultimate renders. They look so good in so many cases. Robins in particular, with that pose and like the petals falling in the background, it just, it hits different. Do you remember when we started this game and everyone was just astonished at how pretty everything looked because we were so used to Wii U graphics? I remember when we saw the trailers and some of the first renders from like the demos and people were using those for Smash 4 videos. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too, and other people, we, we, we tried to do that for one of our region's PRs, and someone was like, I'm not going to play this character in the next game, don't use that render. <laughs> so we had to change it. Uh, oh man, good times indeed. But I'm curious to see if we're ever going to get a character switch from Charlie. Um, I feel like he's been very comfortable with Lucina mm -hmm. in this matchup. Um, but I... It, I I think it'll be, we need the blaster. Where's the blaster at? Yeah, blaster, really good pressure tool. You can't just do whatever you want on the edge of the stage. Uh, oh, uh, and there he your, is. Your prayers have been answered, Z Fly. We're going to see the wolf. Uh, I, I feel like the Lucina was doing fine, but you know this is a best of five set. There's still some room to play around and experiment, and Charlie might just want to see how this is going to go with his tried and true. Yeah, and of course, you know, sticking to the stage, stage, oh, not really playing that much of a role in game two as it did in game one. So very fair stage for both players, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's gonna give uh, Grandmaster that same amount of space to uh, to work with and trying to zone out Charlie, but it's also gonna give Charlie more room to tech chase. Yep. And uh, one thing that's worth noting here: the more room that you give someone with a reflector the more room they're going to have to react. Very true, very true. Not that I expect that to play a giant role here, but it's something Grandmaster has to keep in mind. You know, against Lucina, there's not really any... Oh, oh no. unfortunate. Wait, oh, you can make that back? <laughs> All right. That, that, I got to say, that was really smart from Charlie, because when you do something like that as Grandmaster, that was clearly unintentional. He wanted to air dodge the ledge. Uh, you're kind of shook, and you want to get back on solid ground. The fastest way to do that, to get back to center stage, is to roll most of the time. So Charlie just called that out with a really charged, uh, <laughs> prophetic up smash, and that's going to be the first stock. Yeah, of course, you know, Charlie being as proficient as he is with his character, I'm expecting to see some crazy movements. If uh, being at 23% and bleeding, we may see, like, the... But like tipper fair into um into reflector Ooh, which uh be, if he's able to get that spicy. oh nope there he's gone all right okay well we got something spicy instead from grandmaster yeah. uh always love seeing arc thunder confirms uh charlie also taking full advantage of his new ranged tool as we can see yeah uh oh and there, see some reflectors so yeah what, what i was saying lucina there's no downside to throwing stuff out from a long distance away against the Lucina. She, she can't make that hurt you. Wolf can. So it changes how these two have to interact when they're farther apart. Oh, and there's the tech chase from the falling there. Here's another one. Tech chase, the character has begun. <laughs> how will Grandmaster respond? Okay, the up smash not going to find its mark this time. Grandmaster does not roll into it. And uh, honestly, but... that was like the, the moment he needed to escape the ledge. Only getting tipped, uh, the shield getting hit with the first hit of up smash. Not going to have a lot of end lag for uh, for Grandmaster. Strong punish there on the uh, the wolf flash attempt, which definitely would have taken a stock, but uh, Grandmaster held shield, so was able to dodge that. And, uh, you know, Grandmaster, by holding on to this stock, has really put this in a pretty winnable spot here for stock number two, they're both on their last legs. And yeah, and you're talking about... Sorry, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. 
Uh, I was gonna say, I was if gonna you're talking about raw aerial kill power, like just a stray hit killing, Robin's got lots of that. No, I couldn't agree more, and especially with the way that Charlie has been approaching. He's, you know, he's approaching with his Nair. He's not really fishing for back airs. He is right now, but gets the trade with the, the hard hit of Nair. And at the high percent, that was going to be enough to kill. But trying to lead up into those tech chase situations has allowed Grandmaster to rack up 131% onto Charlie. Mm. And I remember you mentioning that Charlie seemed uh, often sort of frustrated against fighting Robins on stream, which, you know, might be just a stream thing for comedic effect, I don't know. But uh, I will say he looks very adept at dealing with Robins, you know, bread and butter ledge trap with uh, the arc fire at the ledge and then D smash at roll distance. I, he hasn't gotten hit by any of that. Oh. Well, let's see what uh, what this ledge trap's gonna be. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the most fatal of ledge traps! <laughs> I hate to see it. The hardest mix-up. The reset. <laughs> Oh no, Grandmaster just DC. That's so unfortunate. Oh, that is really sad. Oh, I was that's... hoping it was going to be like a, a, a problem on our end and the players could at least play it out. Honestly, I was too. I know it, it's with these Wi-Fi tournaments, every once in a while the streamer will get kicked out, but the players can continue their match and finish it. And then the commentators kind of have to guess what's going on. I was actually hoping that's what it was, but unfortunately Grandmaster... Um, disconnected from the lobby and that's that's probably the worst case scenario for these situations so what what is the the ruling for situations like that here is that gonna cost grandmaster the game well normally that does cost them the game um but that's when we're at like a local level when we have yeah. our our msm online which i guess is now a national level i can't really call that a local level when it's all na right true <laughs> um but uh We'll just wait for to hear from the TOs what the actual verdict's gonna be. Normally, it would be the game, if not the set. Well, while we're waiting for that, uh, just reflecting on what we saw, that was honestly a tighter match than I was expecting when the Wolf came out. Yeah, you know, typically you see characters or players bring out their mains, and uh, especially with these top level players, once the main comes out, it's a much more bigger hill to climb for their opponent. Um, but Grandmaster really just stuck to his game plan and Charlie was struggling almost in the similar situations that when he was playing Lucina. Yeah, it, it felt like, uh, weirdly enough with Wolf, Charlie was having a harder time taking early stocks from Grandmaster. Okay, well, it looks like we got Grandmaster back. Switching to female Robin. Ah, there's the problem. That's what we needed. More waifus <laughs> on the screen. Adaptation made. All right. So we're we're coming out here. We're swinging. We're we're throwing fire. We're dash attacking. What better way to spend a Sunday? Yeah, I mean, this is what this is what how I spent my Sunday. Just dash watching attacking, people beat up each players. other. Yep. Yeah. Blasters, Who doesn't? I mean, that's, that's the smash way of life. Definitely nice. down throws. Or down throws. <laughs> Alright, get up attack, alleviating some of that pressure there. And uh, we've got an even game here, although Levin Sword still got a lot of juice in it from Robin. Woo! But, ooh, bad Horrible DI. That's, that's, that's one of those things where you're trying to drift away from an attack you know is coming, but you get caught in the attack anyway. And I'm sure the, the input lag for um, Wi-Fi isn't is only assisting the the bad DI. However, yeah. you know you have to compensate for that. You do. Wi-Fi being Wi-Fi can only be an excuse for so long. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a oh, different no, game gonna... for sure, but that doesn't make it less of a game. I like the way that we're you know we're seeing Grandmaster really trying to weave in and out, and then with punish Charlie with Levin Sword. Oh, Levin Sword's gone. All right, a little bit closer to the ledge, and back throw would have been able to steal that stock off. But from center stage, not going to be quite enough. Oh, and that's big great. damage now with the reflector. Big damage and stage presence. So they're all, I mean, that's got to be a huge message to Grandmaster. Wow. It doesn't matter how close you are to me, I'm going to react to your L Thunders. 
Yep. Any that, of your thunders. <laughs> that that. Oh! Oh my God! This. Game. Oh wait, Robin. Oh. Robin. My bad. <laughs> okay, boy. I apologize for my my early pop off. <laughs> I did see like runoff dare happen. <laughs> <laughs> we we were going to. Uh, oh jeez. All right. Uh, we were going to be concerned about missing out on some of the action from that last game, disconnecting. They just doubled it there for us. <laughs> yep, Charlie definitely making up for lost time with uh, that, that previous game disconnecting. Um, and yeah, this is, this is what I was expecting yeah. when Charlie picked Wolf. Yeah, that was, that was uh, honestly, that was kind of a, a steamroll of a game there. Uh, Grandmaster, I, I don't know if it's because it took Charlie a game to adjust to the different matchup, or I or, think it's just what? Charlie being a momentum-based player that he is, mm. and once the ball started to roll, it just kept on rolling. Yeah. So, Grandmaster, uh, the challenge here is going to be not letting that game shake him. If he can keep his mental fortitude intact and not go on tilt after a really, really strong game like that from the opponent, mm -hmm. then he can stay in this set and fight it back to a game five. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Honestly, I think we're going to see female Robin hit the bench and <laughs> male Robin come <laughs> out. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, but the female Robin sticking around. Uh, She's not going to get I, down like that. Nope, nope. Going to run it back for sure. Okay, but we have a stage switch. We're going to Smashville now. Way less room to move around here. But you're also going to have that mid-platform, which both these characters can actually shark under pretty pretty easily. Blaster, of course, is going to be going through the thunder. It's going to be um, give Grandmaster a little bit more trouble when it comes to the projectile war. Yeah, um, and... Oh, wow. Wow. Super early stock from Grandmaster. Maybe that's exactly why he picked the stage. You know, not a lot of room to work around. And uh, if you get caught in one of those ledge trap situations, you're dead way earlier. Oh, and it was also like the angle that Charlie kept getting hit at. He was forced to use Wolf Flash, which actually is not safe at the end. And he kept getting caught by those L fires or those arc fires. And um, like, that's really what led to the demise of that first stock. But Elwin, of course, taking his time. Soft Nair, Grandmaster's gonna get the tech. I really like that neutral air that Grandmaster put out preemptively to stop the wolf flash attempt. That's that's a sign of I'm starting to understand what my opponent's trying to do. And as I say that, he gets killed by wolf flash. But... I mean, no, you're you're per you're exactly correct. He does he does understand how he needs to edge guard wolf. But at the same time, Charlie coming in with the adaptation, saying, "I know you're going to try and uh, stand a little bit closer to the edge to land the arc fire. So I'm going to wolf flash higher and just kill you." Mm -hmm. And ooh, nice, aggressive offstage play there from Charlie. Uh, Wolf, not typically known for someone who goes deep off to try and edge guard, but you know, with those lingering hitboxes, Wolf can make it difficult for Robin to get back on stage. And that's exactly what Charlie's starting to show off here. Well, I, all I can say is that I am so happy with the way, the, the flow of this match. The entire set has been a slugfest. These players continue to run and just hit each other. And yeah, this is this is high in. octane smash. I'm super enjoying every minute of this set. Um, these players entertain even when they're kind of charging their stuff up. They do cool things when they have the stuff charged up. So I can't even can't even be said about that. Uh, right now, uh, Grandmaster has Charlie on the ropes, although he does need to get back on stage. Yeah, of course, being forced to recover high, not having a platform to retreat to, which he would have had if we had ran it back to town and city. Um, but uh, he only really had one place to go. You either go to the ledge or you recover high, and Charlie was there to cover it. Mm -hmm. You know, even without those other platforms with potential escape options, I still think the, uh, the scenery change is a good call after a blowout like the game we had before. Oh, definitely. You can just Something... see how refreshed Grandmaster is. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it cleanses the palate. It, it kind of shakes off all the bad vibes you had from the last Town and City encounter. Uh, and it's working out, except 
No, Charlie got oh. his own one. Oh, that's so unfortunate. It, it was actually really great DI on Grandmaster's part because it was. the fair wolf flash normally sends down at a, at a meteor smash, so it would send him down straight uh, into the blast zone. However, holding in allowed Grandmaster to bounce off the stage. You know Charlie's kicking himself for that. Yeah, I mean, he he went for it. He went for the style, and the style and, has got him And you know what's path. funny? Hmm. You know what's ironic? Charlie will go for that 10 out of 10. I, I believe that <laughs> after watching him play. He yeah. will roll the dice, and that's why Charlie's one of my favorite players. I love players who will risk it all, roll the dice, and see what the outcome is. Super entertaining to watch. Always a treat. Uh, Grandmaster, good stuff to him for being aware of that option and picking the right response. Uh, and we have a game five. Yep. It's, and for the first set on stream to be a game five, that's personally could not have asked for more. 100% agree. Uh, this this is going to be. Oh, and I'm just I just had to take a peek at some of the other sets. Uh, the only three that are finished right now were all 3-0s, so I think we lucked out here. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I mean, 3-0s can be entertaining, but they can. This, this is what the people came to see: the back and forth, the yep. struggle, everyone putting it all on the line to make top eight and into the money for the 2GG West Coast Invitational, sponsored that is by Red true. Bull. And, and great that you brought that up, Red Bull. Uh, Help sponsor this event. We've got two thousand dollars for a prize pool here, and that's going to be paid out to all of top eight. Not everyone gets two thousand dollars, but everyone who gets top eight is in the money. So there's a lot riding on these opening matches. Yep. This is really. It's like, okay, do you have to play another set to get in the money, or are you in the money? And really, you know, for these players, it's not about just being in the money. It's about winning mm -hmm. the event. There's pride on the line. They want to show their stuff. They want to rep their region. And interesting enough, we're no longer playing on an Animal Crossing stage. We're switching it up to Pokemon on Kalos. All right, this stage, I, I like this stage. Well, it's Charlie counterpicked here. This is Charlie's counterpick, that's right. I was going to say, I like this for Robin, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm trying to think of what might benefit Charlie here in this stage. I will say the platforms on Kalos give anyone that's stuck at ledge another option against Robin's traps. And at the same time, Charlie has is so accustomed to uh, comboing to people onto the platform and using Wolf Flash. And if you mm. get comboed on the platform and then Wolf Flash happens, you're dead. You're dead. Okay, then that's that's probably some uh, character specific awareness that Charlie's got that he wants to tap into here, and he's already started out great by taking a, a pretty quick stock there from Grandmaster, and he's not at risk of dying yet. No, he's not. I mean, I feel like one throw and then he will be at death percent. But he's close. If, yeah, oh, for sure. But here we go. Are we going to see the Wolf Flash? No Wolf I, Flash. I, still. I thought he was going to do it. Honestly, I wanted to see it. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to see it. <laughs> oh, and we see the Arc Fire starting to fall there. Not being able to go under the stage and dodge that hitbox, uh, it's going to put Charlie in a really difficult position, and Grandmaster is going to take the stock for it. Yeah, honestly, if Charlie was able to grab onto the ledge, he would have been able to like drop down and then use the wall jump to really evade all the pressure that Grandmaster's putting at the ledge. But it's that arc fire falling down that's going to cause Charlie to have issues. Mm -hmm. Really difficult for a lot of characters to get around, especially when they have sort of linear recoveries like Wolf. But now look at the position of Arcfire. We see Grandmaster adapting. He knows that Charlie's going to want to retreat to these platforms. And great back air to clean up the stock. But now Perfect. we see Grandmaster putting Arcfire on the top, forcing Charlie's recovery. Ooh. Whoa! All right. Okay. Yeah, this, this, is, this is the multi-game conditioning here. You save some of your tricks for game five because all set grandmaster has just tried the ledge trap and then when it counts when it's down to the wire he goes off and actually spikes charlie for it that's right i mean the most we've really seen him go off stage is like you throw out a nair to cover the ledge forcing charlie to like maybe recover higher never anything that aggressive yeah that was that was 100 percent my opponent is not expecting this because I haven't tried it once. And now that they're not expecting it, 
I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna get away with it. Hey, but you know Charlie's thinking about that option now. He may have forgotten it before, but it's definitely fresh in his mind. And we see the Wolf Flash getting beat out by the Leaven Sword. A bunch of Nairs, and Charlie's able to escape. Okay, I, you you can start to feel some of the, oh, is that gonna kill on Kalos? That's gonna kill. You will. That up smash is so strong. All right, so that was that was super tense. That was really fast for a Kalos match. <laughs> like, maybe I'm just used to watching uh, slower, uh, slower paced players here, but that was exciting stuff. Charlie will inch it out over Grandmaster in an exciting game five. Wonderful adaptations on both of their parts. That was that was one of the coolest opening matches I think we could have asked for here. Yeah, definitely starting out strong here for the stream. And like you said, both players really revealing some of the cards they had hidden up their sleeves, bringing out that those last minute tech options to to grant them the W.